Check out BigBadToyStore.com for this and other great toys. <laughs> now that is one bull I will not be grabbing by the horns. <laughs> oh no, not me. Nah, -uh. no way. Hey, what's up, YouTube land? Mgo here, the freaking geek himself, and today we will be reviewing the Mastermind Creations, Bovis. So here we are, and there he is, and first and foremost, as always, we'll take a quick look at the packaging. So here it is, here you got a big picture of Bovis looking all bovis -y. He is part of their reformatted line, and on this side you got Bovis, and you got Bovis, Mercenary Supply Specialist, and all that good stuff. On this side of the box, same exact thing. On the bottom, WARNING! You have all that good stuff. On the top, you know, same thing. On the back, you have your obligatory product shots. He does this, that, the other, and that thing too. And awesome! He's part of awesome. That's all I gotta say about that. So, that's it for the packaging. And of course, inside the box, you also get the obligatory, the now obligatory third party collector's card with Bovis. And he's He's in that pose that you would strike if you were in a boy band. It's like, sup, I'm the cool one. Sup, yeah, I don't know. On the back, you have your tech specs right there if you want to read that. Yay, collector cards. Woo. And you also get your instructions, which do have a cool little comic in there. Going on, studying Bovis and his other nut predicons. So you have that going on there. Pretty cool, if I do say so myself. Nice nice piece of artwork there. And if you flip it around, you get the instructions for how to transform him and all that good stuff. So you got that going on. So, moving on to the toy itself. Here is Bovis, who is an homage to G1 Tentrum. Basically, Mastermind Creations is doing their version of Predaking. And this is the first part that was released. So here we have Bovis, not Tentrum. And here he is in his bull mode, and looks really cool. Really, really do like it. Nice work there on the head sculpt. Um, his eyes are really recessed, so you can't really tell his eyes are painted in, but they are painted in. Nice gold color. And yeah, just all around, nicely done sculpt. Just looks good, it just, you know, it hits all the cues that it needs to hit to look like the G1 Predacon. Just very nicely done. Really, really digging it. Very cool. Take a look at the underside here. So yeah, very, very nicely done. Just a really cool looking bull mode. For comparison, here he is with uh, G1 Tantrum. So you can see how they look together. Yay! Old toys. They're still fun. I don't care what anybody says. <laughs> so you have that. A G1 tantrum. And yeah, he's, he's, he's quite cool. Uh, posability wise, um, his head can can rotate, it can move up and down. That's more for transformation than, than anything else because when you move his head down, it kind of just looks like his neck broke. But, um, you know, he can, he can rotate his head, he can look, you know, like, huh? You know, he can do that. Um, his horns are posable, you can actually move his horns around and go this however you want. Um, you can open his mouth, but it's a little disturbing because when you open his mouth, it, ah! <laughs> that's just no. You don't want to do that. That's just that's disturbing. Um, his, his legs, um, they are all in ball joints here at the shoulders, as well as there. There's this extra uh, hinge right there that allows some extra outward movement like that, and it is on a ball joint. Um, the I don't know if you call it a knee or whatever, but this right here, part of the leg is on a ball joint, as well as the foot is on a ball joint. You can get some good range of movement. Even a little bit of a tilt going on there. You got some ankle tilts on the animals, which is pretty cool. And the back legs have the same articulation, you know. That same hinge. Ball joint, ball joint, ball joint. And even does have a little bit of a waist swivel. So, you know. You can actually get some pretty good poses out of this guy. He's, you know, you can get him... Get him all hunkered down like he's about to just, you know, mess somebody up. It, it works. It, it works quite well. 
So, there you have that. Now, accessory-wise, he does come with quite a bit of stuff here. He does come with two guns. You can see here. Nicely done in that uh, like gunmetal gray and black. Pretty cool. Now, you do get two of these. And basically, the instructions tell you that you can plug these. You can see there are posts on, on either side here. You can take them and plug them into these ports here on the back legs. This is the way the instructions say to do it, so I'm going to do it this way. Obviously, you can plug them wherever you want, but I'll do this the stock way for now. And he also comes with two knives, two really freaking cool knives. You can see here the blade's done in a nice, uh, nice metallic paint. Very cool. These things look, they, they look dangerous. They look very dangerous. <laughs> and you take these and plug them in to the front legs. Like that. So you can totally have this bull all kinds of armored up. So not only can he shoot you, he can cut you and gourd you at the same time. I mean, that's just, that's just wrong. And he also comes with this giant double-barreled cannon right here. Yes. He has one of these. Yes, he does. Now, you can basically take this and attach it via this little clip right here. You're just going to bring this down. And you're basically going to take this clip and clip it into these two slots right here. And these two tabs right here will plug in right in here. So you're just going to take it and give it a nice firm push and there you go clicks right into place nice and secure and there is a totally armored up bull and that is no bull right there that is that was a bad joke but that i mean that he means business in every sense of the word i mean he just means nothing but business i mean if you take if you take g1 tantrum and hook him up. It doesn't look nearly as imposing or dangerous as this guy. This is just, you know, dangerous, freaking dangerous, dangerous, extremely dangerous, ridiculously dangerous. And that doesn't hold on as securely. See? But they're old toys, so we still love them. So, yeah, that's Bovis completely armored up. And ready to go. And this, of course, serves another purpose, but we'll get into that a little bit later. So let's uh, let's get on with that business, shall we? Let's. So let's just pull this. Let's get all this off. Get get off. Get off. You're a bull. What do you need knives for, man? What the heck? Makes no sense. Pull this off. And again, this holds in quite securely. <clears throat> there we go. Get that off. So now we're going to go into his combined mode for the combined, what they're calling Feral Rex, which is their version of Predator King. So to get him into Feral Rex mode, get him into his foot mode, uh, let me see if I remember how to do this. Oh my god, I don't think I remember how to do this. I haven't done this in a while. Oh, okay, okay. okay. I know what to do. I know what to do. So first thing you're going to do is you're going to untab the legs right here. You see they just, they just clip in right there. Just untab them like that. You're going to take the legs and you're going to rotate them up so these little exhaust gun things are facing forward. And you'll see there are tabs right there. They'll tab into slots right there. So I'm going to get that in there. Tab that in like that. You want to take the foot, rotate it around like that. And this will tab in right there. Like that. And that'll tab into place just like that. Second verse, same as the first. Untab that. Rotate this around. Get all up in there. Tab that into place. Rotate the foot. Bring it up. And tab into place. Like that. Now you got that bottom part done. Now we're going to work with the legs here. And, well, I guess first thing you can rotate the head. Bring it down, and there actually is a tab. There's a tab right here under the chin, and it'll tab into that slot right there. Like that, to hold that in place. The one cool thing about this toy is that everything locks into place somewhere. And you gotta appreciate that. Things are kind of getting all out of whack here. That's not supposed to be there. You're not supposed to be there, you're supposed to be right there. We'll get into that later. But yeah, everything on this guy locks into place somehow, and that's really cool. 
So, um, let's see what we're supposed to do here. Okay, so first thing, there's a cat hair on it. Seriously, that just it gets everywhere. But, um, what you're going to do is you're going to take these legs right here, bring them out, like so. And you're going to angle these pieces down like that, and this will free up your connector port. You just want to bring that up. And it's a nice tight ratchet. Not as tight as the TFC, guys, but it's still a nice tight ratchet joint that it'll make for a good stiff knee knee joint so once you have that you're going to take you see there are pegs right here and they'll peg in to these ports right here so it's going to take those and peg them in like that and peg this one in like that and these two pieces will actually tab in together right here. So again, everything locks in somehow. And then once you do that, you're going to... What are you going to do? You're going to rotate the legs this way. Rotate the feet. Nope, no, nope, I did that wrong. Nope, you're going to rotate the whole leg like this. There we go, okay. Okay, so you want the leg in this configuration right here. Just like that. And then this will tab in... Actually, it'll tab in right up to this, to this slot right here at the top of the foot. Let's take that, work that in, and push that in, and that holds in nice and secure. Second verse, same as the first. You're going to rotate the leg like this. This little, little bladey piece is facing outward. Rotate the foot 180, and then take that and lock it in. Lock it in, lock it in. Come on, man. Get on, get in there. Get in there! There we go. That's giving me some trouble. There you go. So once you have that going, there you have it. And I probably should have done that later because now I have to split this whole thing. It's probably going to undo all this. Oh my god. Okay, maybe not. I don't know. But basically you're going to split this here. And this is where this part comes in. So you're going to take this piece right here and just slide this down like that, pull that out, and you have a Predaking or Feral Rex hand right here, and I'll just show this off now. Oop. So there you go. You have a hand right here. Again, nicely done, very cool, got some silver spikes going on there um, for articulation, you know, he is going to have a, uh, this wrist is on a, a swivel right here, uh, the thumb is on a ball joint as well as a joint right there, and each finger has two joints. So, there you have a hand for Predator King. Nice to meet you. Okay. Put that off to the side. And now you're going to take this piece right here. You're going to bring this up. Rotate it 180. And that's good to go. Now you're going to take that and just slide it in. You'll see there's a little, there's a gap right in there. I don't know if you'll be able to see it. you see there's a gap right in there. that this will fit into... Hopefully I can let me flip this back up. There we go. Let's get that in there. Hopefully that's in right now. Maybe. There we go. There you go. Then you just close up the foot around it. And you close up the leg around it, rather. Oh, no. I don't have this side in. Come on. Come on. See, I shouldn't have locked in all this stuff before I put the... There we go. Close that up. Make sure all this... Actually, nothing back here came undone. Oh, my God. See, again, everything locks in super secure on this guy. But now you have that all done. There you have a foot slash shin of Feral Rex, a.k.a. Predaking. So, yeah. There you got a big Predaking foot going on dangerous very dangerous and the ankle is on a nice ball joint so you'll be, you'll be able to get some good range of movement there and he does even have a toe joint so he got some movement there and again you're, you're gonna have a nice a nice ratcheting knee joint there so there you have that then just for comparison here he is with the g1 predicting foot as you can see how they look together yes Feet! Okay. 
So moving on, now we'll get down to robot mode. So let's just undo all this, open this up, take out the foot here, if I can. Come on, come on, buddy. There we go. Take out the foot. To get it back into the cannon mode, you just rotate this, bring it down, and you'll see there are two little uh, two tabs right here. They'll tab into these slots right there, and that just holds that in place, like so. And you take the predicting hand, and you just ball it up into a fist. Like that, and you'll see that this tab right here will tab into the slot right in here. Just tab that in. Make sure this post is straight. And you're just going to take this, have that plugged in, then just slide this in. Oop. There we go. Just take that, just slide that into place. And you got it back in its cannon mode. Like that. So, put that off to the side, and we'll get down to. Turning this guy into a robot. So, take this connector port, flip it back down. You gotta undo all this. Unplug that, bring these out, untab these, bring these back up, plug these back in, plug that back in, and now we can start transforming them into a robot. So, to do that, you're going to take these panels here on the sides, open these up. Actually, it helps to, uh, to untab these feet, which again, tab in quite securely. Everything tabs in really secure. Bring these down just to get them out of the way. It gives you a little more clearance. So, you can open up these panels right here. You can flip these panels down. Bring down the legs. Like that, and then you take the foot, it's tabbed in right there, and you're going to take it and basically just pass it through. You see there's a gap right here. You're just going to take it and pass it through itself, like that, which is a neat little trick. Close that up, you know, just bring that around to the front, and there you have his foot. Second verse, same as the first. Undo that, bring it around, just pass it right through itself, close that back up. Bring that forward, there you got the other foot. Now you can take these legs and peg them back in the way they were. And there you got his legs all done. Now you're going to rotate them at the waist 180, like that. And you're going to take these little, you know, little bags that are around his waist and just bring them to the sides. This is kind of a Mastermind Creations like trademark now. Like it seems like all their figures have these little uh, these little discs on their waist that you know just have things on them. And he just has these little like bags. Don't know why, but he does. <laughs> so now you're just gonna bring the arms down like that. You're gonna take these bull arms right here. You're gonna untab them, bring them up. Then you're gonna take this section right here, bring that down. And now you're going to take the shoulder section right here and shift that forward like that. And now you can take the foot and peg it in on this tab right there. Like that. Come in here, bring out the fist, and there you have that. Second verse, same as the first. Bring that up. Bring this down. Shift that forward. Peg in the foot. Find the shoulder. Slip out your fist. There you go. Bring this up a little bit. This is where I curse at my tripod. I need a new tripod for Christmas. That's what I want for Christmas. <laughs> Come on, tripod. There we go. So once you have that done, you're going to take the bullhead, bring it up. Flip down this panel to reveal the face. And there you have Bovis, a.k.a. Tantrum, in his robot mode. And he's really cool. Just a very, very cool robot mode. Really loving the way this guy turned out. And this is why I'm going in on the Mastermind version of Freddy King, because this thing is just amazing. Love the way these figures look. Getting close here on the head sculpt. You can see very nice head sculpt. 
Really, really cool. And just nice overall detail here on the robot mode. Just, just really, really cool on just all fronts. Just nice chunky legs. He's got like guns on his shins. It's very, very nicely done. You know, nice and clean. Not a lot of junk hanging off of him. It's just very, very cool. Really loving, loving these guys. I, I can't wait to get the rest of them. Really can't wait. Now, articulation-wise, his head, it can rotate. He can kind of, you can look up if you, if you, you know, move the panel up, you know, but no, no real other movement other than just rotation. Um, again, the, the, the uh, articulation on the uh, shoulders here are exactly the same as in bull mode. You know, you got your shoulder on the ball joint as well as that extra hinge right there that allows some extra outward movement, you know. And you also have a double jointed elbow here, so you get a nice good range of movement as well as a bicep swivel. And you do get a wrist swivel, as well as a waist swivel. A nice clickety joints going on here. You can go forward, you can go back, only that much. That's okay. You get pretty much full movement forward, full outward movement. You get rotation here, above the knee. A nice clickety clackety joint here at the knee itself. Oh, one thing I forgot to do here in transformation. There are these panels right here. You want to pull these out like that, rotate them forward, and then plug them back in and they just kind of beef up his hips a little bit. Totally forgot about that. Pull that out, rotate that forward, just plug that into the side right there like that. Yeah, they give his hips a little more beef to them. So, you basically have 90 degrees of movement there on the knee, and the feet are on ball joints as well as this post right here, so you can pretty much kind of do what you want with them. Now the instructions do say to kind of leave these panels forward, I guess that does give the feet a little more room, but then it just seems like they end up kind of covering up his feet, so I don't really, I don't know, I don't really like the way that looks. So me, I just kind of leave them in. It doesn't really affect anything all that much, or at all really. I mean, you can still stand just fine. So. Of course, I say that and now I can't get him to stand. Psst. Always gotta make a liar out of me, don't you, toys? How dare you? I am your master, toys. I tell you what to do. You don't tell me what to do. You're not the king of me. Or the predator king of me. <laughs> I just made that up. So, yeah. Very, very, very cool. And of course, he does have his armament. So you can have him holding pistols and whatnot. And he does hold, hold all of his weapons nice and secure. The knives are a little bit of a pain in the butt to get in his hand. Because you do kind of have to just kind of shove them in there. <laughs> There's no real graceful way to do it. Let's see if I can. There you go. Just kind of want to get him in there and just give him a nice twist. You basically kind of want to hold it, you know, kind of press it into his palm and twist it. And, it's, again, it wants, it wants to make a liar out of me. Come on. It, it, it's a little bit of a pain. There we go. Oops, I just had it, and I popped it back out. Come on, toy. I am your lord, toy. Get in there. There we go. So, he can, you know, he can hold all of his weapons quite securely. It just can be a little bit of a pain in the butt to get those knives in. But there you have that. But not only that, he does actually have, like, holsters, basically. Like, these panels that we shifted to the side, have ports in them, so you can't totally holster these weapons. Oops. Of course you have to kind of move these little saddle bags out of the way. So you can totally plug those in for storage. You can also, you know, plug the knives in like that, so. You can't totally store his weapons if you want. And also the knives do uh, can slot in right up here like that for storage. Can you do that with the guns? Let me see if you can actually didn't try to do that with the guns. Oh. Now unfortunately it doesn't it, this is not a secure connection but you know it works. I don't know if you can do it with the guns. Can you? Let me see. Okay, no. I don't think you can. Kinda. Yeah? Nah, they kind of pop out. Nah, not really. <laughs> and of course, he does still have the ports here on his shins, so you could take them and 
plug them in here if you want. Why not? Dare I say why not? But the bottom line is, he can hold his weapons and look cool doing so. Now, of course, let me take this out. Because I got to show this off. Come on, buddy. Let go. You can take the giant double-barreled cannon here. And there are handles on either side. So he can wield this ginormous weapon. Plug this in. Here like this. Plug that in here like this. And he can totally wield the giant double-barreled cannon <clears throat> and make me lose my voice in the process. The one position that really works here is if you have him, if you kind of bring his knee up to support it, you kind of have him in a nice kneeling pose. And you can balance him. Because I've done it. There you go. You can totally have him just ready to launch that thing. That's vicious right there. That is vicious! I don't care what anybody says. That's that's freaking awesome, man. That's freaking awesome. So, yeah. You can totally have that going on. Really dig that. Really dig that feature. Oh, yeah, one other thing I forgot to mention. As far as his feet go, as far as posability, he does have an actual toe joint here also. So you can pivot that up and down. So, yeah. Guy's got posability. So much posability, I, I forget about it. I forget about some of it. But you have that. Now you can also store this giant weapon right here on his back. As you can see, there are a uh, series of slots here. And on his back, there are a series of tabs. And you just take it and just plug it in. Just like that. Now, again, it's not the most secure connection. But it does stay on. I mean, you know, if, you know it, he'll face plant if you try to dangle him from it. But it's secure enough that it will stay on his back. And doesn't really affect his, his balance that much. You would think it, it would make him really back heavy, but no, he, he still stands just fine, even with that giant thing on his back. And it does work. So why not? Yeah, I say, why not? But yeah, this guy is just really, really just too, too cool. He's too cool for school, man. Now I'm going to have to fight to get this knife back in his hand. Let me see. Come on. There we go. Hey! It was easy that time. Almost. <laughs> but there you go. Very, very cool. Really, really digging these guys. Now, for comparison, here he is with G1 Tantrum. So you can see how they look together. The past with the future, and the future has never looked so awesome! That's all I gotta say about that. And here he is with Beefimus Prime. As so you can see how he looks next to a, uh, you know, a standard mainline Voyager. See, you can see how that looks. But yeah, I'm, I'm going full in on the Mastermind version of Predator King. Because I think that Mastermind just, they just knocked it out of the park on all three fronts. Um, we have Predator Kings coming from Unique Toys and uh, TFC Toys. Um, for me, Mastermind is just the better way to go because, you know, the robot modes look awesome, the beast modes look awesome, and the combined mode looks amazing. And for me, the other two Predakings, they all seem to fail in one aspect. You know, like, the Unique Toys version, the combined mode looks really cool, but Unique Toys' Predacons... You know, the robot modes just look like G1s with some extra joints, and the beast modes, in some cases, just look outright horrible. Like, their tantrum and uh, uh, their headstrong, those, that bull and, and, and that rhino, those things look horrible. They look like anorexic... I, I don't know what they are. They, <laughs> like, really skinny, anorexic-looking animals, and they just don't look good. Um, TFC... Uh, they're doing, it seems like they're doing uh, some good things with their Predaking, but, you know, it, the the look of those just don't really hit me in the right spot. And after Uranus, I'm a little, uh, you know, uh, a little hesitant to go in on another TFC combiner. Um, 
So as far as I'm concerned, you know, Mastermind has proven that they can put out good quality figures and and they just keep getting better and better. And yeah, this guy, you know, nothing on this guy seems fragile. I have not once have I been afraid that I'm going to break anything on this guy. This guy is just rock solid. And like I said, just looks good in all three modes. For me, it's Mastermind Creations all the way as far as my third-party Predaking goes. And, you know, I would recommend it. If, if you want to go in on a third-party Predaking, I think this is the way to go. But obviously, you, you're going to have choices. You have three choices of how you want to go with your third-party Predaking. So, totally up to you. But as far as I'm concerned, this is going to be my third-party Predaking. Mastermind all the way. Two thumbs up. It's the way I'm going with it, but I think that's pretty much it. So, don't forget to check out M Games, check out Lori Plan, follow me on Twitter, all of that good stuff down in the description below. And I think that's pretty much all there is to say. So, there is the Mastermind Creations Bovis, and this is MGO saying, remember, you don't stop playing because you grow old. You grow old because you stop playing. Be geek, be proud, palm in your face. <laughs>